Take a look at this group of people of the top 10 Harvard biology graduates. And let's propose they would have to solve a very advanced biology issue. Would they be able to solve the problem? You would think so, right? As they contain a very intelligent group of people. But actually, there's a good chance they won't get to the answer. Simply because there's not enough cognitive diversity. Okay, let me explain this. I think we can all agree that most of us have had different experiences, come from different cultures and educations, and these all shape our perspectives, interpretations, and thinking styles. The exact same experience can mean two different things to two different people because of two different beliefs. For example, a very famous uh, difference in interpretation could be, the, could be how you consider this glass, half full or half empty. Or I think many of us have had a fight with a sibling or a friend, at least I have. And from my perspective, I'm right. But from my brother's perspective, he's right. But what if you put both of us in a team? Imagine how useful this could be. Okay, maybe not me and my brother, because that would probably end up being a big fight. But the idea is that we all think differently. We all have things we don't recognize or see. Gaps in our understanding. I would refer to these as blindnesses. Other people can complement our biases, and in return, we can do the same to them. And the idea is, if we include as many different perspectives and thinking styles with different blindnesses and ideas, we can get a much fuller picture of the situation. And this image from Matthew Side's book, Rebel Ideas, clearly demonstrates this idea. This is a team trying to solve a problem with very similar thinkers. Do you see how to have a very similar grasp on the issue and together they can only cover a small area of the issue? But what if we take a group of very different thinkers? We can immediately see how to have a much broader understanding of the situation. They see a bigger picture. If we include as many different thinkers with many different perspectives and thinking styles, we can get a much fuller picture of the situation. And in this concept lies the concept of cognitive diversity. Coming back to our Harvard graduates, why exactly wouldn't they be able to solve the issue? As they include of a group of people with a lot of expertise, right? They're for a reason the Harvard graduates, top 10 Harvard graduates. But if we take a group of people that have all been taught by the same people in the same line of thinking, they're going to have nothing to add to each other's perspectives. They will all be looking at the same issue from the same approach as they've all been taught in the same way. And we will end up with this model again. This is something that often goes wrong when businesses, organizations, and governments are hiring. They're thinking they're hiring an intelligent group of people, but instead they're only hiring an intelligent group of individuals. They're always looking for the best of the best applicants not knowing that these best of the best have often undergone a similar education and have similar uh, view on the issue. But um, they are preventing cognitive diversity from happening. And businesses, governments, and organizations are not only preventing cognitive diversity from happening by only hiring the best of the best. Another thing many people do is only hiring the people they like or uh, agree with, uh, with the views of the companies. And of course, it's very nice to have someone that thinks alike within the company, but in this way, a fresh perspective is being prevented. And this is actually also one of the consequences of having a non cognitive diverse team. I think most of you can relate to this. You know, when presenting an idea to a group of people and everyone agrees with you, and admires your answer, and then this amazing feeling comes up of validation and smartness. And although this feeling may seem good, this is often very dangerous for your team. This is often not the sign of any kind of glorious idea. This is often the sign that you're having a much too homogenous team. Because when having a team with similar thinkers that all agree with each other, one of the consequences is that um, perspectives are going to be reflective, uh, biases are going to be re reinforced, and eventually everyone thinks the idea is much greater than it actually is. We often value average ideas simply because there's not enough cognitive diversity. And
And this does not only happen within teamwork. You know, this is happening everywhere, including one of the platforms most of you are probably on. I think many of you are on social media, and that everyone that has social media can agree that uh, that has Twitter can agree that they enjoy their homepage. Because yeah, what is otherwise the entire purpose of having the app? And Twitter is one of the many social medias that works with algorithms that only shows you the things you like or agree with. Because yeah, this is the only way we can keep scrolling and scrolling, and they can keep making more money and more money. And what this does is when I would scroll through my phone and all my ideas are being shown, it would feel like the entire world agrees with me. My biases, biases would be reinforced and confirmed. And again, I would think my ideas are much greater than they actually are. You fail to identify any of your blindnesses. And this is not only the case with Twitter, but with so many other social medias. And this is exactly what happens in a homogenous team. Uh, when a group of people uh, with the same set of thinking, they produce a homogeneous framework that may fail to identify any blindnesses. And in addition, they think their idea is great too simply because everyone agrees with each other. Mm, so next time, please check twice when having such feeling of confirmation. So, but is this concept actually true? Like, what do the numbers say? A few studies have been conducted studying this idea, and Harvard Business Review was one of them. And what they found is that cognitive diverse teams perform up to three times better and faster than teams with like-minded individuals. Of course, to what extent a team is cognitively diverse, it's hard to evaluate, but um, they did this by forming teams and evaluating them by these two indexes, knowledge processing and perspective. And after having run the execution over a hundred times, they all the time ended up with these results. And as you can see, the higher a team would perform in knowledge processing and perspective, the better they perform. And many other studies have proven the same thing. So, I, we explained the positive outcomes of cognitive diversity, but how do we actually get to this point? How can we, um, how do we allow cognitive diversity to happen? A tool you can use in order to ensure that you're having a cognitive diverse team is um, allowing psychometric tests to be taken. And these are these kind of tests that assess what kind of thinker you are, how you process knowledge. And we all do this differently. And by including as many different results in one team, we are more likely to have a cognitive diverse team. Another thing you can do is that we should stop looking at it simply at how the individual performs, but instead looking at how they would contribute to the group. Okay, but so now we have a cognitive diversity, but we cannot just have diversity. We have to actively create systems that allow the diver expression of diverse opinions. And the most important thing is that people should feel free and safe to share their ideas and not adjust to the dominant opinion. And personally, I think we have all experienced this ourselves too. When there's a dominant opinion or any other kind of dominance, we tend to adapt to that. And this is something that really should not happen in order to let all the opinions be heard. And therefore, an environment is needed where everyone feels safe and free to share their ideas. And a way you can do this is by letting everyone uh, fill in an anonymous form or paper before discussing something. And I, th and I think you'll actually be surprised about how many perspectives there actually are. Coming back to our Harvard graduates, what if we put one of them in a very cognitively diverse team, with all with people that have looked at the same subject of biology of a different perspective? Imagine how far they would come solving the issue, and how much more creative they would be. They would identify so many threats that are often overlooked. And this is exactly what 3M did, a multinational conglomerate, uh, and when they tried to reduce the infections and surgeries. And this is something that many experts have been trying to do for a very long time. Uh, but instead, they brought together a cognitive diversity. They brought together three different people from three different areas. An expert in wound healing, an animal surgeon, and an, a theatrical makeup artist. And the wound specialist is someone you would expect, right? But by including, it, um, 
the theatrical makeup artist was totally something different. And it turns out that their compound insights, including those of the makeup artist, were crucial in order to solve the problem. And this is one of the many of the simplest uh, problems where cognitive diversity can help solve a problem. And not only these kind of problems, like cognitive kind of diversity can help solve so many other problems today, including today's most prominent issues such as climate change. Our issues are getting complexer and complexer, and cognitive diversity is therefore needed more than ever before to face today's issues. We need to look more critically at the teams we make in order to optimize and drive change. But not only governments, businesses, and organizations should te make teams more critically, we also need to surround ourselves with different people too. To suggest, start looking at how cognitively diverse your social media is and do something about it or speak with people with totally different opinions and try to actively understand them. This is so important because it's necessary to understand each other um, and have as many different perspectives in a group in order to work together towards change. So next time, when solving an issue, please do not bring 10 hammers, bring a toolbox. Thank you.